Okay, so I want to start out with a question. And maybe this is a question you've heard before, or maybe it's a question you've never heard in your entire life. But I want to ask you, what do you think is healthier? So option A, we have fat-laden butter. All of the calories are from fat. Most of those fat calories are from saturated fat. So option A, we have butter. Option B, we have whole grain enriched fortified wheat bread. Okay, so option B, enriched fortified bread. And I'm here to ask the question, what criteria are you using to decide which one is healthier? And maybe instead of actually asking ourselves which one is healthier, instead we should be asking ourselves which food will give us chronic disease. So maybe it's not exactly the butter that's going to make us fat. And maybe this whole enriched fortified wheat bread isn't exactly going to make ourselves whole and enriched and fortified. And maybe we're not exactly what we eat. So if you're confused, you're like a lot of Americans who have been told to up the carbohydrates and lower the fat. But I'll try to clarify a little bit. So diets that are high in carbohydrate often every time have their carbohydrates metabolized or broken down into sugar, into blood glucose. So the more carbohydrates you eat in your diet, the more circulating blood glucose you're going to have. And glucose and blood sugar has long been correlated with Western disease. Now, when I'm talking about Western disease, I'm talking about diseases like cancer, inflammatory diseases, autoimmune diseases, heart disease. Basically, if you have a chronic illness and you're in this room right now, it's probably what we would categorize as Western disease. And perhaps one of the best ways to study the effect of a high carbohydrate, low fat diet on the proliferation and prevalence of Western disease is to study societies that don't eat carbohydrates as much as Americans. These people include Western Africans, Native Americans, and Fiji Aborigines. And that's exactly what these next four studies did. So we have the first study, was in 1908, and it released a 460-page document in which they surveyed 2,000 Native Americans. And out of those 2,000 Native Americans, they saw zero cases of cancer. They saw three cases of organic heart trouble, no peritonitis, no appendicitis, no stomach ulcers, no grave liver disease, hemorrhoids, and varicose veins were rare. This work was later corroborated in 1913 by a physician who was a missionary also working in Western Africa. And when he got to Western Africa, he saw that none of his patients had any forms of Western disease. And then when he was working there throughout his 40 years there, white settlers came in and started giving his patients, these indigenous Africans, carbohydrates. He started giving them flour and starch and sugar. And what he saw was that Western disease actually started to appear throughout his 40 years there. And then in 1910, there was another study in which they surveyed 115,000 Native Americans. So we're making a big jump from 2,000 Native Americans to 115,000 Native Americans. And what they found out was that they actually saw only 29 cases of cancer out of 115,000 people. And then perhaps the most influential study came in 1915. In 1915, they surveyed 63,000 Native Americans of all different tribes. And out of those 63,000 Native Americans, they saw two cases of cancer. And then the most numerous of all these studies was conducted on Fiji Aborigines. And they conducted this on 120,000 Fiji Aborigines. And out of those 120,000 people, they found two cases of cancer. So as we see, there's a correlation between carbohydrates and societies that eat carbohydrates that have Western disease and societies that don't eat carbohydrates and don't have Western disease. Why are we often told to up the carbohydrates and up the whole grains and lower the fat? Well, this all goes back to a man named Ansel Keys. So in 1952, Ansel Keys asked the question, does total fat give us heart disease? Which is a question we probably asked um, ourselves. So what he did was that he went to Europe and he surveyed countries there and he wanted to look at the amount of total fat in their diets and the amount of heart disease that they had. This is an epidemiological study that sounds pretty solid. So this was the first graph that he conducted. In 1908, or excuse me, in 1952, Ansel Keys 
presented the first graph at a conference in Mount Sinai. And what he saw was that, as you can see, there is a great trend line, which is the top line. And this trend line shows that there is a correlation between the amount of total fat that you eat and the amount of heart disease that you have. But the graph on the right only shows six data points. However, he surveyed 22 countries, which means that he omitted 16 of his countries that did not fit his hypothesis, which is huge misconduct in any scientific field of research. So he omitted those 16 points, but it didn't matter because he promoted this data all throughout nutrition and all throughout science and physicians and dietitians and nutritions grabbed this research and said, fat is bad for you and ran with it. And then Ansel Keys actually also capitalized upon another study that was conducted way back in 1913, years before this study, which is one of the studies that makes us think cholesterol is so bad for us. And this study was conducted on rabbits. And so what this researcher did was that he gave these rabbits diets high in cholesterol. And then these rabbits who were eating a lot of cholesterol in their diets also had their blood cholesterol rise. And so he concluded that the more cholesterol you eat, as we've a lot of us can conclude, the more cholesterol you eat, the more blood cholesterol you have. However, this research was later conducted on canines and humans years after 1913, and it was shown that there's actually no correlation between the amount of cholesterol that we eat and the amount of blood cholesterol that we have. However, Ansel Keys grabbed his poor research, grabbed this research in 1915, and promoted it all throughout health. And that's when this low-fat, high-carbohydrate craze started to happen about the 1960s and 1970s. But this wasn't enough for Ansel Keys. He didn't do enough damage yet. He went on to conduct, in what my opinion, is the most negative and harmful health study ever conducted in American health, called the Seven Country Study. So the Seven Country Study asked the question, what type of fat gives us heart disease? and he wanted to look at saturated fat. So, like his study before, he totaled the amount of saturated fat in, West, in diets in Europe and looked at their heart disease. And he concluded that sat the more saturated fat we eat as humans, the more heart disease we'll have. But we should know by now not to trust anything Ansel Keys says. There are three main problems with his study. And this study is why we all think fat is bad for us. The first is that he handpicked his data. He picked his countries that he thought would format to his hypothesis, which again is huge misconduct in any form of scientific research. The second one was that he actually had conflicting data, meaning that one of his data points was a country that he surveyed in fin he surveyed Finland. And what he saw in Finland was that in Eastern Finland, he had data that supported his hypothesis. But then in Western Finland, he had data that did not support his hypothesis. In fact, it contradicted his hypothesis. But he actually took that and swept it under, under the rug and only focused on the data that supported his hypothesis. And then perhaps the most influential of all these points and the most corrupt of all these points was his study on the island of Crete. So he studied the island of Crete and he looked at the amount of saturated fat that they were eating in their diet. And he wanted to look at the amount of total heart disease that they had. And so he went there for about a month or so, and he observed their amount of saturated fat. And he saw that they ate very little saturated fat, they ate very little animal products, and they had great health. They had no heart disease. And so what he concluded from this was that lower the saturated fat and you'll have great health. However, he forgot to factor in a 40-day period in which it's a holiday that they celebrate called Lent, where they don't eat animal products. But the rest of the time, the other 325 days out of the year, they eat a lot of animal products. So Ansel Keys was there during the holiday of Lent, and he did not factor that in. So he factored that into his research, though, and said it supported his hypothesis. So what we have is terrible research, drawing back from his old research and the cholesterol studies, and these all came together, and this was a government-funded research project that was a huge grant in 1957 that was given to him. So these three big studies were promoted all throughout science and all throughout nutrition advice and physicians and doctors and researchers were telling their clients, lower the fat, lower the fat. It gives you heart disease. The research and the data is there and we have to believe this man and so keys. And something has to replace fat, right? 
protein stays within a narrow ratio. And you don't really hear of high protein, low protein diets. You hear more of low carb, high carb diets. So protein stays within a narrow ratio. So if fat is lowered, what has to be raised? Carbohydrates. So carbohydrate consumption has directly correlated to the amount of obesity in America. And we can actually substitute this, this trend line and we can take away obesity and we can add in all sorts of Western diseases like cancer, autoimmune diseases, inflammatory diseases, heart diseases, and especially type 2 diabetes. So carbohydrate consumption has directly correlated with the amount of obesity and Western diseases that we have in America. But in fact, I'm not the first person to tell you this, and hopefully I won't be the last person to tell you this, but the FDA actually recommends that we have about 300 grams of carbohydrates per day, which, as I've shown, gets metabolized into sugar. So I'm going to pour out 300 grams of carbohydrates here, and I want you to imagine this bowl as your body. And imagine all this carbohydrates and all this sugar being poured into your body every single day. And also, if you can believe it, this is what the USDA recommends for us. So this is 300 grams of carbohydrates. And this is what the government says that we should be eating every day. And this amount directly correlates to Western diseases like cancer and autoimmune diseases and inflammatory diseases. So all of this, we're told, to go into your body every single day. Now, if you're like me, I don't think that's great advice. I think that the science is not there, and the science has actually been twisted. In fact, in 1984, Time Magazine came out and said, don't eat saturated fat, don't eat total fat, it's awful for you. But then in 2014, 30 years later, the same magazine on the same cover came out and said, eat saturated fat, it's fine for you. It literally says, eat butter, contradicting exactly what Ansel Keys was saying. So there's so much misinformation out there that we ultimately have to demand true science. But for some reason, the USDA and the government is telling us, up the whole grains, lower the saturated fat, and lower the total fat. When in fact, perhaps, we should be doing the opposite. So ultimately, this is not just about you or me. This is about our children. This is about developing countries that model their food system after America. This is about the two-year-old that can't fit in his car seat because he's too big. This is about the seven-year-old that can't fit down the slide because he's too obese. This is about the 44-year-old that's told that he has type 2 diabetes, even though he's been following the government guidelines his entire life. This is about the 74-year-old that's told that she has Alzheimer's, even though it could have possibly been prevented by diet. This is more than just about us. This is about us and everyone else and the future of the world for global health. And ultimately, it's up to us to find the answer to the question, butter or bread? Thank you.